everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Casual Master Quest Season Number 4. It's going to be episode number 61 for you today, coming out live for this August 12th. I, I, I am your horse. I'm your horse. Look at my <laughs> You're horse. my horse. horse uh, I know. Look at this horse. I'm your host, Tyler, uh, a.k.a. Two Times Tyler, but let us not forget the two fun partners I have in the team right now. Man. How are you doing, my buddy? Doing all right. Chilling. Excited. I, I had a I freaked out last week because I thought I forgot to put a tweet for the episode, but then I remember we didn't record, so I'm glad to be back. <laughs> uh, me too. I'm actually glad that you came back as well. <laughs> uh, but we do have a fun little announcement. We have two, actually, we have like 2,000 announcements, but we're not going to go into the full details here. Uh, the first one is behind the scenes right now, we have a new partner with uh, the team Brandon, a.k.a. Zigzagoon. He is uh, going to be doing some sweet work for us for YouTube and whatnot, doing some video editing and highlights and all the like, uh, and hopefully we can get some good stuff going on once we get to that. However, as you can see, our podcast guest from last week is, well, sorry, two weeks ago, is still here. He never left. Yeah, we just can't get rid of him. What? Weird. Oh. I just never, yeah, oh. I do what I want. <laughs> What's up with that? What's going on here? Oh, wait, I probably should be the one that says this, huh? Wow, everybody, welcome Glenn, a.k.a. Razith. Glenn Houston is going to be our third most active, well, not most active, well, maybe the most active, the, maybe the, be the first wheel. act. You're going to be the third person of the team for Casual Master Quest. Welcome to the show, my man. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad. I am so... the. You know how fucking exciting it was, like uh, when I first like looked at Nick with puppy dog eyes. It's like getting to the going to the pet store, and it's like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. And it's just uh, this. And I'm gonna say, Glenn's just wagging his tail, saying, "Hey, I can do tricks." It's like Nick. <laughs> Nick is like, okay, oh boy, this this, this is a 15 year commitment, but sure, yeah. Oh man, so I'll move out when I'm keeping, 40, man. <laughs> we, <laughs> we are part of the the three beard club now. Jeez, uh, this the is tri -beard beards. club. Yeah, tri -beard. the tri beard, the beard cubed club, <laughs> and that's why we have a terribly made T shirt for that. Uh, what do you do to keep your beard so luxurious? I see what you're talking about, Nick. Uh, I'm talking to you, Glenn. Don't don't oh. be so modest. Oh well, I uh, sometimes use beard oil, but I have a brush that's for beards. And I use it pretty regularly. I should use the beard more. I've never heard anyone call my beard luxurious, and I'm thankful really? for that. Yeah, no, no. It's just getting no, to a it, point where people are like actually taking my beard seriously. I yeah. don't know if it I mean, doesn't it, look good. It's long, full. Short. It has a nice fluff to it. Uh, I honestly feel like uh, somebody would want to pet it. It's not bad to pet. Okay. It could be okay. I mean, I'll take your word for it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, if I do you, it uh, often. Do you, do you? Do you? Are we people that like to pet our own beards? <gasps> like, Heck. oh, oh. Um, on occasion, not a, not when it's okay. this short. The longer it gets, the more I'm like, all right, now I can do the the thinker stroke. Well, yeah, the. Uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, uh, yes, yes, being... I see. Mm. Oh yeah, evil villain. Mm, <laughs> stroke my beard. <laughs> uh, -huh -huh. uh, Glenn, being a part of the podcast means you've been working on some stuff behind the scenes. Let's hear about it, man. Uh, well, I'm helping get the stuff together. Uh, but are you talking about the other thing? I'm talking about whatever you put into the show notes. Oh, what I put into the show notes? Yeah, I help. I help with like uh the the modular flexible segment. Uh, you know that's the that's what my, now? the modular flexible segment. Oh, I thought you said the 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 modular fuck dungeon or something like that. Well, uh, so, uh, Casual Master Quest is gonna be, uh, taking an exciting turn for the more interesting. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, honestly, everything's open book right now. You're open season to talk about whatever you'd like. Awesome. Well, uh, I know we wanted to kind of transition with that later, so I guess, like, that's what I'm doing right now This is the modular segment and also just being a part of, you know, the active in front of the scenes thing, so unlike Brandon, who's helping us back behind stuff, but I'll talk about the other thing a little later. Okay, good deal, good deal. Okay, so Let's let's have a little sit down and talk. Uh -oh. Sequential flow. Oh, okay. I'll go to. It seems that uh, like uh, we're rolling the sorry, camera and thinking, whatnot. Yeah, we're, yeah, no, sorry. I thought I thought we were uh, like further back. That's fine. Uh, so okay. I'm looking at the order right now. Beard stuff, secret yeah. podcast stuff. Going to Nick talking yeah. about CMQ planning. 
Sorry, we, uh, I, I blanked out. I was uh, paying attention to I just, yeah, you did. everything's running And I also uh, thought we were further back, so... Yeah. Um, uh, all the lights green, or is there a couple yeah, of bad because, going Yeah, on because, no, because everything's good. No, we're just doing this, uh, you know, on so many different platforms for the first time. So in case uh, anybody missed the tweet and forever came in for however reason or from wherever, uh, we are multi-broadcasting to YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, and uh, Facebook, I believe, through your Facebook, Tyler. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I'm just kind of so like, my grandma can see right now. Yeah. So I'm just kind of making sure that um, we're on, we've got the green light everywhere. Um, like as in like everything's running smoothly everywhere, and I'm happy to report everything's running smooth everywhere. So I, I stopped paying Hell attention yeah. for a little bit, um, which shouldn't happen as we get more used to this as we do. So um, yeah, yeah uh, I I really haven't been. There's nothing much that's been happening really, um, ju- uh, because I've been off, but my friends are also doing exams and stuff. So I've been bored just playing video games, um, going out on drives, because I'm apparently a 36 year old man in 24 year old body. Like I'll go out for a drive, I'll get a, I'll get a bottle of pop, and I'll sit down on a bench somewhere, just sip on it, <laughs> and listen to something, and then come okay home. Okay, there, Forrest Gump, Jesus. <laughs> um, and so like I've just really been getting things set up, like reorganizing the Discord for CMQ, figuring out like how things should flow reorganizing and uh, making some things efficient with the show and then looking for artists to commission for a bunch of things uh, i'm i'm uh, currently trying to finalize the deal with uh, rotting jackal fairly uh, popular within the destiny community uh, for a new logo for us um but yeah no beyond that that's it i'm gonna stick dinner tonight um on the, the night that we're recording which is Stay. saturday yeah um yeah, next working uh, through Casual Master Quest to try to get a uh, a sweet talking with uh, Riding Jackal to get a new icon. And nice. over on my end, I'm actually trying to talk with uh, other artists for uh, interesting commissions. Right now, uh, the big one that's in the works is uh, for a Twitter slash uh, Twitch uh, banner. And uh, I thought it was cute, the idea of, uh, so far, it's currently five. I haven't talked to uh, her yet about maybe adding more in the future. Of us just uh, you know walking around like uh, what do you, what do you call those uh, I'm, I'm gonna trash talk them those piece of shit look uh, clay figurines of angels precious moments I think oh yeah precious moments yeah yes I hate those uh, anyways uh, imagine yeah, like five of those walking <laughs> look uh, it, it, it's like the baby boomers equivalent of uh, troll doll oh, like trolls or something I was gonna say those uh, little, little by Thai. The name of the company, Beanie Babies. Oh. It's like uh, the the boomer baby boomer equivalent of BB ba- yeah. Beanie Babies. Uh, Everybody had a okay. little. <laughs> I, I went on a tangent on the tangent there. Long story short, I got uh, five people marching in line in this idea. Glenn, Brandon, Nick, Amanda, and I. Uh, all in Stardew Regalia, and I thought it was pretty cool. And she gave us a rough draft, and I think it looks pretty sweet right now. Uh, she does a pretty damn good job. We're looking at her work right now, so I'm curious to see how that's going to turn out. And uh, Nick earlier was talking about steaks. Speaking of steaks, over in the D&D podcast, no, not podcast, the session that him and I are a part of, uh, we successfully managed to infil- uh, you know, inf- infiltrate the royal mansion of the suspicious king by cooking a bunch of steak and uh i thought i was gonna have the drop on them in dungeons and dragons as the dm and that did not work at all turns out uh they handled the fight with a lot of ease i was kind of upset nick um nick it, it went surprisingly well i think uh you had one for lack of a better term i wouldn't know how to like officially call her but you had one npc right uh, you had Rosea. Uh, dmpc i believe it's called right uh, yeah, and she was just a powerhouse. So she was mowing mowing down enemies on one front because we were fighting on two fronts, and on the other front we were just being, uh, we were just being held like the three or four of us were being held by two characters, so like two enemies. So, um, it was a it was really cool being split on two different fronts and two different tiers because it was also like it was multi level, so it wasn't like you could just walk across and help the other side. You had to like think about going down the stairs, or jumping across, taking some, you know whatever. So um, it was um, it was it was fun, but uh, I think we've had tougher fights in previous encounters. And you know this, and we talked about it, and so I think you've made some changes accordingly, and I'm excited, because I've not felt the risk of death uh, until, uh, like, since I had the dark mantle over my head, and 
<laughs> and the the way we had to get it off was I was like, I told my team I can take it, and they started bashing me over the head with whatever weapons they had, um, uh, and I nearly Glenn, died. Do you know what a dark mantle is? Uh, it, imagine a sorting hat looking creature that will uh, it attacks foes by dropping onto people's heads and then latching around its neck, like this horrific creature that just covers the entire head and tries to kill enemies by suffocating. Uh, Nick stuck his head into magical darkness, curious to see what was on the other side, and one of these suckers latched on their head, or his head. Mm -hmm. And so the crew, while well, Nick uh, was giving the thumbs up oh, to you know, yeah. do this. Sorry, I know what those are. Uh, encouraged the team to essentially have one of them thwack the dark mantle and Nick by extension with a quarter staff and then have the other person heal Nick. And so it was just turning into this uh, very singularity style of whack-a-mole where it was whack, heal, whack, heal. Nick passes out, heal, whack again, knock out Nick again. I'm pretty sure and I made. It, I had to make two saving throws. That saving throws. Yeah, it, it, yeah you're right. Yeah. Maybe I should just... I mean, you guys are in a cave. I could just throw 10 of those things. Like, <laughs> Dark man starts swooping down. Oh, gosh. But yes, I did uh, make some updates to the D&D &D, uh, session that we'll be having tomorrow for us, but yesterday for anybody who's listening. And uh, I think I'll have some fun talking more about that. And hmm. uh, I think that's going to be it for the in real life segment, because well, this is in fact. Yeah. Now I can yeah. tell the secret things, though. And that's oh, a great segue. Oh, oh okay. Fine. Go ahead that's a great segue, secrets. though, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. beautiful. Go ahead. Go, come on, Mall Cop. Show me, you know, come strolling in on your Segway. I know All it's a completely right. different word, but it sounds the same thing. Well, call me Ma pa call me Paul Blart because I'm about to Mall Cop in here on my Segway. Um, <laughs> no, that's the secret thing that we have been talking about and actually uh, is in the works. Is some sort of weekly, hopefully, fingers crossed, weekly D&D &D stream slash podcast for mm. everyone to listen to involving people in the cmq team playing with me as the dungeon master because that's kind of yeah. like my dream to that, do for a living it's gonna be kind of wild yeah uh yeah like just thinking about it the way that uh it was gonna roll out man it's gonna it's, it's gonna be interesting because uh nick and i we've done like sketches and stuff or skits and stuff and you know joking about it but we never actually like played D, &D together together and uh nick Both what do you players. think that's gonna be be like if we pull off something like that i'm very excited because uh, again i think we mentioned while we were discussing um i your campaign tyler is the first one that i've that i'm playing and so playing another person's campaign making a different character i want to do that at least a couple more times before i can be like all right i kind of like D, D, or i kind of i kind of hate D, D. that like i want to give it a solid try and so far i've had fun and i and i realized that it's probably because um of the dm and so i feel like more than anything else uh, it comes down to the right DM for whether you're going to have fun with D&D or not. <laughs> a thousand <Absolutely>. percent. <laughs> and uh, and with the character stuff, like, I'm just trying to put together interesting things. Um, I'm not too, like, at first I was worried, but I don't want to create a specific kind of character or, like, fall under tropes. But I've stopped caring about that, and I just want to create something that I think would be fun or interesting. And then just play them as myself. Like, I, like, I'll just start off with the natural ones until I become, like, an expert D&D player. And I'm like, I'm going to create a gnome paladin and... He, he he awesome or, like I, I don't know, i don't i don't know if that's unusual but like you know what i mean like i'll just start picking, okay <laughs> so yeah or like a gnome dragonborn uh, or sorry dragonborn uh okay dragonborn bard or something like or this is dragonborn full metal wizard. alchemist uh wait what is the name of the the creature that is that horrific scene in uh full metal alchemist? no we're not Monk talking about yeah. we're not talking about the chimera scene we're not we don't talk oh, about the that. chimera well, we don't, you're, you're talking you said gnome and dragonborn. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, I, mean, I mix. I, I thought two different races. Because when I say he's I think short, dragon, <laughs> short I think about scaly? dragonborn, I think about Skyrim. So I thought it was a class for a second. Yeah, no, <laughs> so, no but it's a race in D and D. Dragonborn, yeah. or dragonkin, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, dopekin. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. So. Yes, we do have a D and D podcast in the works right now. We're going to be figuring that out as time goes on. But before I, I get raffle stomped again by any particular uh, bearded fellows, uh, this is in fact a video game podcast. So let's talk about games that we played this week or the past yeah. two weeks since we did go on vacation for a whole week, and it didn't really feel like a vacation because we still worked on you know the show right and everything. It was a work vacation. 
work vacation. Workation. So games that we played together. Uh, there is one game that I say with uh, <laughs> a severe amount of regret, and that is uh, League of Legends. We uh, we played some League of Legends together, Glenn. <laughs> Glenn is hiding his face. That's totally okay. I you know understand that. Uh, Just you know, hiding behind stuff. you, support. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, you're funny. You're funny. I've been uh, able to play a little bit of uh, more Pike and some Galio. I've really, really starting to appreciate the fact that I fall into the support role, and I'm okay with that. It means I don't have to worry about CS. If I'm CSing, I better be having a relic, you know, shield or whatnot, mm -hmm. or otherwise, you know, what the heck are you doing? And, uh, you know, the only thing I got to do is, you know, either set up plays or murder stuff, which I'm okay with either of those. Uh, have you been having any fun with League of Legends lately yourself, Clint? I mean, I know mm -hmm. we played together, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it sucks losing, especially when you don't feel like there was much you could it have done about it. It sucks losing. Uh, well, just... Raise us 2019. <laughs> No, like, it, it's because, facts, like, bro. more often than not in competitive gaming, you don't rely on other people. Not, And now I know that that's not always true in, like, because, like, I don't know, like, the BRs and stuff like that. If you're really good, you'll do well. You know, and BRs are right, really popular that's... with Apex and those. Like, like, but in, in when you play, um, oh, what's the other game? I guess Apex isn't a BR, is it? Apex is a BR. Oh, yes. that's right. There's little teams within the context. Of there's that. So you uh, can... the, yeah, there's teams of three. Apex uh, yeah. doesn't have a solo mode yet. They're coming out with a temporary solo mode, but I digress. Yeah, <laughs> but I digress. So I just feel like in League of Legends, it happens more often than in other games that your team holds you back hard. I know that Overwatch, that's a pretty common thing too it's like all oh, my team was trash oh no i don't know what yeah. you're talking about overwatch has amazing players always you can never lose <laughs> in overwatch no. and there's never a debate in the last five minutes of the fight of who fucked up yeah oh never never never, never. never. no never everyone's everybody always perfect gracious no it was my fault no it was my fault well you want the honor yeah i gave it to him last time <laughs> I, I, I screwed no. up and then engaged let, let me buy you a skin on leak you know that, that's <laughs> exactly what happens so, you know, the the tip of the, the top hat, you know, the glistening of the, the monocle, and, you know, he hits honor for you with the tip of his cane. And, Just, yeah, that's exactly how that works. What a gentlemanly thing to do. Mm, so it's been fun say. because I'm playing with friends. Not always because, like, the game, I think, itself is beautiful. I like the story. I like the combat. Uh, it's just the people sometimes that mess it up, which is almost always why something sucks, <laughs> usually. So, if there's one thing I like to get a kick out of is uh, discovering the different sides of people, there's two things I can do. The first one is get them drunk. Drunk people really reveal a lot of different emotions and facts about them. Or, alternatively, watch them play League of Legends because <laughs> I've seen a lot of different sides of you, Glenn. Oh, yeah. More often than not, I'm trying for that understanding. Like, I'm having fun with my friends, but I get, whoo, you get me pretty heated pretty easy. I'm the guy Fire. that trolls are like, oh my god, I want to make him mad. Because I will give you a reaction more often than not. Because <laughs> I'm not willing to sit there and watch somebody be a dickhead. Um, and... You know, I'm going to call you out on it, and then you're going to get mad at me, and then I'm going to get frustrated with you, but you're the one that wants me to be frustrated, so you won. I get it. But, I don't know. I don't like letting people get away with crap on the internet, just being douchebags. Yeah. Oh, man. The the poor dog that sees, you know, the, the mail truck go by the street every single time, and he's <laughs> just trying to bark to fend it off. And... Okay, so, <gasps> Nick, you've been playing quite a few games. Let's hear about them, man. Ooh. Um, Ooh. We played... Um. We played some Stardew Valley together. Hell yeah, we did. We we finally had the uh, the Broventure. Am I right? Am I right? Um, sure. Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> what, what, what would you call our adventure? Uh, you, Nick, Brandon, and I. Um, Sorry. You, you, Brandon, Amanda, and I. Not you, Nick, Brandon, Amanda, and I. I, I, I wasn't I there. Know. Um, um, what would we call I'm it? sorry, Glad. I tried inviting you. Uh, I was I commitments. was doing other stuff. It's fine. Sorry, Nick. No, it's fine. Um, I don't know. I didn't come up with the name for that. Uh, the only reason we came up so the Bro Venture is in regards to a um farm that I run on my streams with some of my friends, and I believe Chad must have dubbed the name for that because the tagline was "We're just a bunch of farmers just cuddling up to keep warm during the cold nights, just working hard, sweating it out. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that." And and so <laughs> it's hence middle the Bro of Venture, fall, but it still gets chilly. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. enough. Fair you know, enough. Because we're broke, so we can't really afford heating properly. All the all the money goes to taking care of the animals. We're just farming <laughs> out here, fishing. You know. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brother. <laughs> so it was interesting with uh, the four of us. 
Uh, the way that we <laughs> broke uh, into different roles, uh, Amanda decided to take over for the chess and the farming. Brandon made sure that, you know, his responsibility was to go uh, water the plants and whatnot and try to forge a little bit. And then I immediately just started chopping down every tree until I turned into a deforestation company. And yep. Nick, Nick decided to do the most important role of all. And I respect Fight. him for this. Fishing. <laughs> Ooh. It, it, you know, as soon as he could, got a fishing pole and started going for that sweet, sweet money. Yeah, um, because uh, as you saw, uh, Tyler, you stopped by for a little bit, but w- with uh, with the bro venture, um, I'm the one like I'm doing Amanda's job, where I'm kind of like delegating and like like all right, this is what we need for the community bundles. This is you know we need to do this, and I'm the, like I enjoy farming too. I enjoy a lot of uh, the different aspects of uh, um, Stardew. And then so, but then playing with you guys, I'm the least experienced in terms of time and in terms of efficiency, because I would just be a detriment to the way some people set their farms up, I think. And Why, so because I, we're farming power gamers or something? No, like I, that? I, I didn't, free, it's not a bad thing. It's just, it's just factually, like, I don't care about too much about the most efficient way to set up a farm and get the maximum that's not my thing so i'm like i'll just get out of the way let you guys do this i'll just go fish I, because i enjoy i fishing. can think of one person at least who is regularly on my stream who would be a much it was a much worse <laughs> uh farm mate compared to somebody who just likes to fish okay i mean that's, that's just true. one I won't say any names, though. I'm going to say the name and shame. You might know who we're talking about, Tyler. (laughs) No, no. Please don't say that his name. That's cool. Uh, No, I'm not going to say anybody's name. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, if you want to email it to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so, uh, (laughs) I mean, you say that there's more experienced people in terms of efficiency and stuff. But instead of going for the the proper crops in spring, Brandon decided that he needed 150 parsnips instead, which is overkill in, in the spring of the first month. I mean, listen. He was he was doing his own thing. I wasn't gonna stand in his way. He was on a mission. I just wanted to play the little clicky mini game and just hang out and kind of like get whatever we needed. And so I'm curious. I really want to see how it you know slowly slowly devolves because I ran out of trees to cut. So I started fishing with Nick. And then I'll water the crops uh, with Brandon and Amanda just to ease the process. And then whenever it's raining, Amanda and Brandon like to go jumping into the mines together. And that's their, you know, version of fun. While Nick, you know, hunts down whatever fish he can during, uh, you know, the raining season. And then I I don't know what the hell my role is. <laughs> like, being the person that, you know, uh, jumped uh, head deep into Stardew Valley, it's like, eh, I'll just kick back. You know, you guys you, do You are the mind. modular segment. You just go where you're needed. Yeah, I, I mean, if Brandon <laughs> wants to go mining, I go help him water stuff. If there's yeah. nothing to do. I try to make some money with fishing yeah. and I I chop a fucking ton of tr- trees down. It's interesting. It's interesting because there is a Twitch Rivals tournament for Stardew Valley, and I was looking up the rules. Oh boy! And then they have what? set objectives over I think four or six hours on the oh. most amount of bundles, uh, the most amount of money, the most amount of uh, uh, in-game progress. Like th- there were some uh, rules set out and stuff, but it made sense. Um, and How does so- somebody get chosen for that competition? Though I don't know. You just got to suck up to Twitch, and then eventually you just get selected and you get to uh, put together a team. But um, I play Stardew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I would, which was interesting at least because I'm like, how can you, how can you turn Stardew competitive? Uh, definitely not through the BR mod, which exists, which I think we should yeah. still give a try. Um, <laughs> I'm listening <laughs> because we have weapons in the game, so I would make it make sense that True. there's a BR mod. True, because uh, that combat is on point. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, no, I just, I just think it's interesting. A that- battle royale for Stardew. What a <laughs> life we live in. Oh, God. Yeah. Mega bonds and stuff. Do the villagers, can they defend themselves or can they attack or is that just completely separate? Do they uh, drop enemies into it? I, I have no idea. I, I, I really do want to check out the Stardew BR mod because I think it would just be a fun, stupid thing to do one day, um, but not to Absolutely. take it seriously. It's like humans fall flat or something, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, that's Stardew Valley for now. Uh, over on Nick's end, you've been playing a uh, new game last night. I saw you streaming a little bit of it. Yeah, I played a game called Moonlighter. So the the premise for Moonlighter is that you're a store owner by day, and at night you have to go down into the local dungeon, uh, kill some enemies, get some loot, sell it. Uh, the story is a little bit... There's a little bit more to the story and, and what you do, but that's <laughs> yeah. just essentially the gameplay cycle. Um, huh. I was going to say, do you, do you sleep at one point or no? Yeah, so you'll go to the dungeons, come back, sleep, and then um, you start up the next day, get whatever loot you got, sell it off. Um, and it's interesting because the selling part of it is is 
has some depth to it, some sort of depth to it. Uh, so you don't know the prices of any out- items outright. Um, so you'll set up, you'll set out an item, and then you'll sort of guess. All right, so I got this vine. Um, I'm gonna set the price for this vine at five gold. And so you'll have customers come in. They'll look at it, and then you'll get four reactions. Like there'll be a little, you know, a little speech bubble that'll pop up, and you'll get four reactions. You'll either get one mm. that's very cheap, like it's this is a fucking bargain. You'll get one that's, oh, this is a good price. You'll get one that's a little annoyed because it's a little high, but I'll buy it. And you'll get one that's like, this is way too expensive. And so you kind of mm. have to set things out and and guess as to whether or not um, uh, that's a good price. So when you set out something and it's too cheap, you're like, fuck. All right, cool. I'll, I'll set it out. And I've had this happen plenty of times last night where I'll set something out. I'll set like, it, it was called the white stone. And it's just a little block stone that I got in the, in the dungeon. I put it out and I'm like, all right, let's set this at 20 too cheap and i had like six or seven of them like shit all right i said down, set down the next one set it down at 80 uh, no 50 they're like too cheap i'm like what all right cool set the next one down for 100 too cheap i'm like you've got to be shitting me i had to go all the way up to 250 before i'm like all right cool they're finally happy with that price so i'm not making a loss on that wow i mean they were very happy with the previous price yeah, yeah 20 sure. bucks and yeah, then and then awesome. sometimes uh, and it changes daily um when they make the reaction for that face, you'll see for that item, uh, there'll be an arrow that either goes up or down, uh, determining whether that, that item's popular or not popular. And so you can adjust prices also accordingly. So if it's a popular item, then you can ad- push up the prices a little bit. And if it's not as a popular item, you'd have to bring down the prices to convince people to buy it. Um, oh. And then so you can get upgrades for your shop, you can get upgrades for the town and invest into the town to build up the town. Um, and then there are different Ooh. dungeons to unlock. Um What's really cool, though, uh, another thing really cool about the game is you, when you start buying weapons and armor, there's a progression system like Monster Hunter. So you get a basic sword and shield that now can go into two different trees. One tree is just a standard sword and shield upgrade and just keeps buffing like the normal attack. And the other tree is an elemental damage tree. So the first uh, oh. tier is uh, air, uh, like wind damage. Second tier is fire damage. Third tier is lightning damage. And it just keeps increasing the damage, but also the damage type. And same thing with the armor. So there's three classes of armor. You've got fabric, iron, and steel. Um... Fabric giving you the less, uh, the least health uh, addition. Iron giving you the moderate. Uh, steel giving you the most uh, health uh, addition, but redu- at the cost of speed. Um, and so when you buy the first set for each, then it unlocks the next three or four upgrades for them. So I thought it was really cool because you go down, you'll find materials. You'll have to keep some of those materials so that you can upgrade and progress each of your armor. So it's not like you're just getting rid of that armor. You're you're adding on to it. So it's, it's, it, it had a surprising amount of depth. And this game is Moonlighter. Moonlighter, yeah, you can find it on Steam and Epic, and it also has a DLC that came out for I don't know, like seven seven dollars. Really? Yeah. I was gonna say I know it's uh, mm-hmm. twenty bucks on Steam right now. Yeah, so seven dollar DLC does, doesn't seem too bad, honestly. It, honestly, like when you were doing the Hunting at Night, it had a uh, Binding of Isaac kind of vibe to it, just the way you're mm-hmm. doing uh, dungeon dwelling, right, or delving and uh, fighting off bosses that uh, totally could wipe you out. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Like you, you were doing pro plays, like doing the dodges and stuff. Like, wow, that's impressive. When I was like, man, if I played this, I'd probably get, you know, my oh, well, face yeah. smeared I did, across the floor. I did wipe uh, several times the first few times, losing a lot, because you lose everything. So in your inventory, you have stuff that goes in your Oof. backpack and stuff that you carry on you. And so everything that you carry on you when you die stays, but everything in your backpack goes. Minecraft oh. rules. Yeah. Yikes. Or and, Escape uh, from Tartov or whatever that game is. Where something like, like that. FPS yeah. where you, you pick up stuff and if you win, you get to keep stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But if you go in and die, all your stuff goes away. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So it is uh, procedurally generated. Um, it is very much a dungeon, like a, a roguelite, you know, kind of like when you go into the dungeon. Dungeons aren't too big because each dungeon has four stages before you get to the main boss of the dungeon, and there are four different dungeons. Um, the last thing I will say, though, uh, about the game is the artifacts and the stuff that you find in the dungeons, in the chests, they have certain curses on them, Ooh, which makes shit. which makes for very interesting um, inventory management. So you'll have curses where... Um, because it's in, you know, you have the general cardinal, you know, north, south, east, west, and you have northeast, southeast, northwest, uh, whatever. Uh, so you'll have items that'll be like, all right, this item will destroy uh, an item in this direction. So in like the northeast direction. This item will destroy it, an item in the south direction when placed in your bag. And then you have items that can only be placed on the left and right side, uh, left and right slots. You have items that can only be placed at the top or bottom slots. And you also have items that will remove curses from certain items. So if you place them correctly, you can eliminate some of the curses and then move things around and make more space. But I thought huh. that was super interesting too. Yeah, that, that would seem to be like a mundane. That's something nobody really, it's like, 
did you like that game? Well, I really enjoyed the inventory management. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you like... You don't hear that often, but I, I enjoyed that challenge. Oh, that's really cool. It doesn't seem like you can get a backpack upgrade either. So you're mm -hmm. stuck with only 20 slots going through such a deep dungeon. So my strategy was, yeah, no, you can't get a backpack upgrade, which is which I think adds to the challenge. So my strategy right now is to just go through the first or the second level of the first dungeon, um, get as much money I can, get some upgrades, upgrade my armor, upgrade my weapons, and then I'll start, you know, just skipping the the looting and just trying to like solve the dungeon as as much as I can. Um, so that's kind of my strategy now. Like that forces you to do that because by the time even in the first uh, floor of the dungeon, you're filled up, and then you have to decide: yeah. should I get rid of things? Should I not get rid of things? Because and fabric some of those goes are consumable. Through. No, but you can get rid of them. You can. There's like a little thing in your inventory that you can sell them for like like 25 percent of their value or something um, so you can free you up can some space in the dungeon, though? you can do that in the dungeon yeah okay yeah, well yeah. that's it's not really too bad but then like when you're trying to make money at the start it you yeah. don't really want to get rid of anything especially when you can yeah. pick up a bunch of fabric and you don't want to get rid of fabric because fabric runs for 250 each and and the villagers just love buying that shit up uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> yeah um but yeah i'm gonna be awesome. playing more of it i only got about two and a half hours three hours into it uh, i want to play more is it all single there's... player it is single player, yeah. Cool. I will say, though, the music is fantastic in that game. It's very forlorn it, when you're in the dungeons, as Tyler said last night. It is very menacing sometimes. But during the day, it's really nice, calming, relaxing. It's kind of like, it's a really chill game. I enjoyed it. It's like d, -D. It looked very <laughs> chill. Uh, that was Moonlighter, which is out on Steam right now. Like I said, for uh, $20, I believe uh, Nick also said it's in the Epic Game Store as well. Now, Glenn, Glenn, you've been picking up uh, a game that I've really, you know, I've heard in the back scenes and all that stuff, but I really never gave it too much thought and uh i would go as far as to say that you are uh how to put it mildly uh obsessed a little bit it's a little uh bit. it's one of those things that kind of it ebbs and flows with my whims and so like i'll play it for a long time and then like for several months and then i won't pick and it up for like eight or nine months and then i'll see like a new expansion or a dlc or some new updates and i'll be like oh i gotta get back on there and then i play it you know the next 20 nights in a row you know well, uh, let's talk about it let's talk that is, about that arc. is uh that is arc um they just released a new uh map because one of the cool things that they are uh i don't know what the, the the house that made it wild card uh they allowed a lot of the 3d models and things like that to be um get, like open access for the community as long as they were developers and they, I mean, they did make, that for their other games so might as well make it yeah. open access to everybody right but the cool thing is, is that not only outside of because there's the island, scorched earth, aberration, and extinction are the four um, official servers maps uh, within the context of the story. There was the center and Ragnarok, which were both completely fan made and free for everyone to use. Um, wow. And they and Wildcard even uses those maps to like release variants of existing monsters. Like you know, you have your rock golem, and now you have your ice golem, or you have you know, we've got these cool flyers. Oh, we're going to introduce griffins into the world. Uh, Rick, and what so the hell? yeah, but it's so this Valguero, supposed to be dinosaur based or. It's all dinosaur. Wait, did I not say that? Well, it's just to say you're saying a griffin, which is a mytholog or a mythological creature. Yeah, and then there's also there's wyverns. You can you can have a dragon. Okay, so I'm having some trouble trying to like what pathway are they trying to follow here? Are they trying to go for like historical uh, realistic or are they? Uh, I mean, if they're introducing dragons, uh, let's fun let's survival. Say, and let's say whatever the hell you know you can think of that yeah. isn't in modern day world. Yeah, one of the bosses. Uh, some of the bosses, because basically the idea is that you're you've been this you're this character thrown into this arc where uh, they are kind of testing different humans uh to see who has the ability to adapt and survive through different circumstances um and if you are able to do that you learn stuff gain stuff levels health all those things and then if you are able to gather these artifacts that are buried within these like really difficult caves to get into you can summon bosses when you defeat all the bosses at gamma beta and alpha level you fight the boss of the arc and so, like, the mini bosses are, like, giant spiders or, like, King Kong-sized uh. monkeys um, or an actual flying red dragon. So, like, 
And then once you defeat them, there's like this crazy thing. And it like, and that's your progression through the arcs. Once you defeat the arc, you move on to the next one, uh, gaining and carrying with your character the knowledge then and power that you had gained in the previous ones. Uh, but all of them are different settings. So you have to get used to like being like living in a place that's mostly desertous or this place is tropical. And then Extinction has all the different biomes and the expansions offer a bunch of different replayability. That's why it's kind of like, I'll play it forever. <laughs> it's awesome (laughs) such a good game and i'm playing it on steam for the first time which is moddable so we're adding things for ease of life in Uh, contrast to you were playing it on a console earlier i was i play i was playing on the xbox just an xbox one and then when i got my pc i had digital so i was able to play it over here too but microsoft and oh because it's a different service oh you bought a digital yeah okay so i've actually bought it twice now okay yeah. If that tells you how much I enjoyed that game. <laughs> Great, it you was also it on t- sale for $17 on Steam when I got it, so. True. Fair enough. Fair enough. Nick, you love this game, don't you? Uh, No, it's not about the game. I just don't like the developer. That's it. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Because uh, they were in charge of Atlas, and Atlas was just, um, you know. Oh, Atlas- yeah, they just released Blackwater, right? Uh, I stopped paying attention when 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 they did their pre-release of Atlas. If you had a controller, you could scroll down far enough off the screen and access an arc menu. Atlas was just really bad skinned arc, re-skinned arc. Oh my gosh! Yes, I remember yeah. that. And the I didn't realize was super Atlas janky. was the game. Yep. Oh no! Yeah, oh, I'm just not no. a fan of the developer. Otherwise, I'm just not a fan of survival games like this in general. Um, and you don't I've- like Pokemon Go, right? Uh no, I have my own issues with Pokemon Go. It's not that I Pokemon hate Pokemon Go. Okay, because it's just it's, it's just a Pokemon reskinned Go? Ingress. There's a game called Ingress. Yeah, no, no, I, no, I know that. Yeah, no, okay, but, cool. But that good, makes sense good. because it's like same developer and they're kind of doing the same thing. Yeah, different things. That's fine. But then I'm talking like at least they had to make somewhat new assets and try something different with uh, right. Uh, Pokemon Go, right? Whereas with Atlas, yeah. it was essentially they're just like, we'll just slap a different name on this, and then here's Atlas. Yeah, it just seemed like yeah. lazy development but then i don't know anything i'm not a video game developer i don't know whether they were under time crunch or whatever but um i'm not also a big fan of survival games like that in general unless i have friends and we're okay. just trying to goof around um i did download yeah. rust but rust has a bunch of issues uh, just yeah. like optimization wise like it takes me a good 20 minutes to load into a server Ooh, and that's and understandably that's through an h uh, like a hard disk i don't have my most of my games oh, on an ssd still. but then still 20 minutes to get into a server to download all yeah. the information i i that put me off almost immediately that's, that's so a big much. no thank you right there yeah, it wasn't even a queue or anything it was just downloading all the assets and i'm like i don't understand why it's taking this long shouldn't take this long that's crazy yeah, yeah. that's nuts that no, i'm, I'm actually times, uh, i was trying to get onto the uh grand theft auto 5 roleplay servers it's just it can be a nightmare trying to get on both queues and downloading the info right. oh. you were saying though glenn oh I'm, I've uh, speaking of survival games. I've thought about uh, playing Seven Days to Die sometime soon because the same guys. That's the only thing. That's part of the reason why I had what wasn't playing Ark is because the official servers suck. I'm sorry if you like the official servers, uh, but per- basically paying for your own server is one of the only ways to really have fun with it because you can play with your friends, you can keep out people you don't want to be in there, or you can make it public, whatever you want. Um, and you can change the settings and stuff. But we, one of my subs on Twitch has a friend who has a server and he's allowing us to use it on stream for free. And that's part of the reason is having access to a private server again. Right, right. Uh, not just the that's stinking... Nice. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, and I have access, so I can go in there and change settings and put more mods on if I want. It's awesome. But yeah, that's awesome. That's the only... I was going to say that's like... You were talking about servers anyway. But oh. Seven Days to Die is another one that also requires servers. So, like, we may be doing it through his service as well again uh, on stream. That's something to look forward to. Uh, yeah. I mean, thank you to the guy that's uh, making things happen. Yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome. He comes in... He used to play the game. Uh, and now he's just nice to let us use the server. Uh, but, uh, so he was, but he's been watching us play again and he's like, I think I might need to play this. So, oh no. Oh no. Yeah. No. And I mean, it's a good time to get in. If you're buying it on steam, it's 17 bucks and you get four games. Well, I guess you technically just get the Island and I mean, but all technically three you of- get two games. Just one is reskinned. It just got <laughs> again. Well, you get the island and then you get the three DLCs because the DLCs come with the base game, but it's still not expensive. I got the Explorers Edition, which included everything. Um, normally $100. I waited for a good sale and it was like 50 or 60 bucks on Microsoft. So, Speaking but either of, way, uh, open world multiplayer games that you've been enjoying. Ooh. Are you excited to try uh, No Man's Sky once uh, the update comes up for it? Ooh! 
Uh, I'm very yes. excited for that. I, I was going to say, is, is I is, have is PlayStation that, uh, VR, yes. so uh, it's going to be. Oh, you're going to play in VR? Yeah. I'm going to be playing a VR. Nice. That's my favorite oh, thing. Man. Is that they aren't separate servers though, no, so yeah, I can be can in VR yeah. with you, and it'll just track the movement of yeah. the model with my actual head, which is so neat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, do you guys have No Man's Sky on I console? Do, so I'm going to be uh, no, not on console. I have it on PC. Oh, yeah. so I was like, oh wait, I th- are they joint servers? We'll find out. We can find out, maybe. I maybe. yeah, I, I think say, that would be good did to know. PlayStation pull the or uh, Sony pull the the giant switch for that too. I'd like. I to don't know. Them. I mean, like, uh, what's it? Dauntless is on everything. Yeah, Dauntless is mm. crossplay. So maybe they're allowing. Maybe they're more open to the idea. I think honestly, it's the next step. But uh, <laughs> we'll see how far they let it go. I don't know. But yeah, either way. I'm playing in VR. I probably put mm-hmm. 400 games, 400 hours into that game from launch day. I put day, 400 so. games. Oh, okay. okay. 400 games into that hour. Yeah, like I've <laughs> uh, like I've said about uh, No Man's Sky before. I think uh, way way before. It is the greatest redemption game. I think. Oh my god! In yes. the last couple of years, uh, from what Wait, they started so off as. Yeah. You don't like survival. Okay. Games. Yeah. I, I I knew you were gonna call me on my bullshit, <laughs> but there's something. <laughs> There's some, like No Man's Sky is not as hardcore as some of these other yeah, ones. Yeah, I just wanted and to know what the, what was yeah, different. Yeah, and it's not spooky, and it's not kind of it's not <laughs> like it it doesn't it's not as I think limiting as some of these other ones where you have to worry about food and hydration and all of this. No Man's Sky is it yeah. was built on the idea of exploring, and so even with just minimal survival, like foraging and harvesting minerals, you can still go out and explore, and I enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, whereas all these other like you know Rust, Seven Days to Die, Ark is like, all right, you're gonna die if you don't get any heat in the next ten seconds. You're like, oh shit. Yeah. You know? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I'm very excited. I- I'm I redownloaded No Man's Sky. I'm gonna get some refresh my memory with it before i go back into beyond <sighs> so good well beyond and this one's called uh oh, it's called oh beyond God, it so th- this one was next the last I thought the this big one was next and then the, oh the i thought it was beyond. like nexus or something maybe that was just something i saw in a weird article i don't know i think they beyond. have one of the cool. mini updates called nexus but yeah they're gonna have real are they adding they're adding like missions and stuff oh my gosh so so I compl- i'm so sorry you yeah, no, have no, to uh, say something okay, again it. about arc after after this after this after this um all I can tell you that I know for sure that they're adding because they haven't really given us too many details about what's coming beyond. But there's going to be instances with up to 32 players. Wow. And I believe it used to wow. be only about four or five. And you could have it set to kind of like Journey where you could just randomly encounter other players on the internet. Or you could invite your friends into your lobby. But I think you know, huh. the, the 32 players in a lobby. And like in an instance. That's... Yeah. So you're better off for beyond, honestly, anybody who has the game starting off a new uh, save file. Because you'll start off in the base galaxy, so there's more chances you'll encounter people. If you if you wanted to test out that feature and stuff. Oh, I'm never gonna do that. I would never <laughs> give up all my S class ships. I, have I mean, you don't, S- have S- you don't have to delete everything. Delete the save file, but you know. I know. But <laughs> I want to show off my fleet, man. I've been working on this that since 2016. That's fair. Oh jeez. <laughs> Okay, what I was going to say too, when I came back to Ark at the right time, because they released this new map, right? And then, okay. like, a <laughs> week or two after the the map came out, they released uh, the that there's a new DLC coming out called Ark Genesis, which is going to introduce new monsters. It's like 35 bucks for two DLCs, one that's coming out in December, and then another the same winter. Okay. So within you pay 35 bucks for two DLCs and all this new interesting stuff, right? And that's on top of this new free map, Valguero, which might be my favorite favorite free dlc that has ever come out and so like it's just it's magical right <laughs> it's magical i'm sorry i had to, oh, I had to talk about it. but also no man's uh, sky is amazing and i'm super excited about it oh uh, man over on uh my end i i'm working on fire emblem three houses and uh, I, I got a little bit more me. time is this I, it I, oh yeah i i found it is yeah this I it did. yes uh was that, that was it? a car that was a car. That was a car? Okay. That was a uh, car. Did they lose the engine? Did it run away? Holy shit. No, a lot of people have really, really big egos and really, really Ball fat fantasies. wallets. Oh, I was gonna, That's what I, was I say every time I hear <laughs> somebody drive by. I'm like, sorry about your dick. <laughs> anyway. Oh, uh, jeez. Uh. <laughs> So, Fire Emblem Three Houses, I only got like an hour and a half uh, in when we last talked about it uh, about two weeks ago. I am currently around 36 hours in now. So, I, I get a little bit more time, a little bit more in-depth, you know, talk about stuff. Uh, Glenn, first off, yes, I did find your doppelganger voice actor. My voice doppelganger, game, yeah. And, and it, it freaked me the fuck out because I had it on the TV and it 
I heard him and then I started listening to him again. I look at my wife who's, you know, it's like, hey, uh, can you pause that? I need you to listen to something. I start playing it and she's like, is that Glenn? I'm like, is it? I know. Fu- like, are, are you currently like under contract with Nintendo and you can't talk about it right now? Because it I- totally sounded like you. I played it for a friend, and he was like, maybe one of those auditions you did, because I've done a bunch of auditions, maybe they just took my voice, or, like, my yeah, email but- changed, or, like, they reached out to me, and I never responded, and so they just kept it, and used no, it, they- and I was just like, they- I don't think they would do that, and I don't, no, you know, I would remember purposes, auditioning no. for Nintendo, you know, like... Tyler even showed me that, he, and I'm like, is that fucking Glenn? What's he doing in a game? What's he doing in a video game? Is this it? <laughs> is this it? Is this it? For those of you who don't know, I don't know. I think we should put it on the Discord just because it's great. But uh, that that's the line that this blacksmith says to Tyler, Tyler's character when he was it, playing. It, it freaked me the fuck out because it sounded just like yeah. It's there like, you go. Glenn's repairing my swords for me. <laughs> Oh, I no, played he, it for he, my people them. on stream, and they. Th- I was like, "All right, I'm gonna play it," and they just heard the music in it with everything, the background music, and and I and it got to the end, and nobody said anything, and I was like, I was on, I was on stream Discord with uh, Beast of Burden, and he, I was like, "Do you hear that?" He's like, "That wasn't just you talking." <laughs> he thought that I had paused <laughs> and then said, "Is this it?" three times, and went, "There you go," like I was talking to something else, and he was like. That's in Fire Emblem, and I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Dude, <laughs> so, yeah, it's fucking uncanny. dude." Uh, I am going to, and uh, I'm going to throw it in the uh, the Twitch channel for people to look at if they want to, real quick here. But oh, uh, perfect! It just it it freaks me the fuck out, and I don't understand why. Like, it just freaked me out. A uh, weird coincidence. I maybe I have no idea, but it's like that is unholy. Like how similar, like it sucks because there's actually more lines that you know it's like oh maybe there's you know there's a greeting and then there's an outro line i also let's do i was like man maybe it sounded more like you i'm like what the fuck is this black magic and like Ah. i think after i heard the intro and outro i started like shouting to the skies like man on the cliff with the ocean in the background going why Ah. doesn't this make sense but yes uh, i've been playing uh fire emblem three houses (coughs) got a, a little bit of time into it right now uh so couple of things you know before i was like appreciating the music and the voice acting and stuff this is my fire or this is my fire this lights my fire uh this is my favorite fire emblem game of all time without any I reservations break. uh for anybody that you know is listening that's actually playing themselves i uh chose the house of the black eagles which is led by uh the character uh house leader slash emperor and or empress in training uh edelgard and I know that means absolutely nothing for you guys, but people, you know, will either nod in respect and go, well, oh, okay, whatever, you can pick that class, huh? But the storyline was fantastic. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about Fire Emblem and whatnot. It was interesting because the original premise, I won't go too far into it because I don't want to, you know, spoil anything, is you are a professor at a school. Uh, you, were, you were a mercenary with her dad just doing your own fucking business and you do uh, accidentally just stumble right into the, you know, the three future leaders of the entire continent. It's like, whoops, <laughs> just stumbling. What weird anime timing. And uh, you help him and you save him. And uh, the guy that, you know, is there to help him, uh, you know, the babysitter, if you want to call him that, is like, hey, your father was actually a knight and he uh, he ran away like two decades ago. You should come back. And so you go back and you're like, hey, you should be a teacher. And it's like, but I'm an 18 year old child that has like two voice lines and I never showed any proof that I'm a professional. You know, it's like, you're going to be a professor. I'm like, I'm a professor okay. now. <laughs> yeah, cool. And so I'm immediately like the cool teacher. Everybody wants to hang out and talk with me and whatnot. And I've been having a fun time dealing with uh, their way of handling uh, support links. Now, uh, I'm not sure if you've ever played a Fire Emblem game, but they have a uh, ranks that go up that generate uh, bonus stats and whatnot when they're next to each other in battle as well as conversation called support links and you uh normally you just generated it by having a friend next to another friend and they both you know one of them defeats an enemy just kind of like uh hey they're close to each other in battle so this will trigger this kind of situation but now they've not only gone to uh, like a persona support link style way of handling things there's more ways of interacting with them uh for example like i said the uh, way you could raise it was just 
just by battling next to each other in the previous games, but now you can just you can talk to them outside of actual battles because you can walk around a hub area, kind of like uh, the tower in Destiny 2. It's just it's weird because Fire Emblem, you're just used to going from battle to battle, essentially. It's just a series of battles and they give you some storyline plot in between, but now it's like you choose your own adventure in between the times. It's really weird. You can go fucking fishing. <laughs> So it's more yeah. um, open world RPG now. Uh, I mean, like I said, it's a single hub world, but in that area, it's a very large map that gives you the opportunity to do a lot of, you know, shit. Right. Like if I wanted to, uh, I could spend one day just uh, sitting down in the, the lunchroom, you know, calling people in saying, hey, let's eat together and they'll raise their uh, motivation and their uh, support link with me, which motivation hmm. I can then transfer into throughout the week. I'll be doing a lecture to the class to where I can train a specific skill that they want to work on. Like uh, oh. their ability to cast uh, black magic or the use their sword or flying or whatnot. And it's been interesting because before, back in the day, uh, you know, upgrading to a new class, it was pretty much like, hey, this guy's level one at level 20. He's going to go into this predetermined Pokemon style class. And then that's going to be the end of that. But now it's like, you know, he could be a black magic user. But if you want to make him a knight, you could totally train him with the sword and, you know, horse riding. And he can become a, you know, a knight that happens to know black magic. And I thought that was cool as shit. And so I I'm having a fun time because there's four different levels of upgrades in class. Classes you can get. Uh, level three is pretty much the de facto. If they specialize in one thing. This is going to be them in a nutshell. Uh, like it's going to be their final form. It's great. But then you got the fourth level, which is essentially having a hybrid of sorts. Like, uh, for example, you know, Black Magic Guy, once he hits his third stage, he is set. He can cast Black Magic and just fuck shit up. But if I want to train him in horse training, I can turn him from a Black Magic Dark Sage into a Dark Knight. And it's like, uh, there's no actual benefit to the magic side or the horse side, but you can combine them together to make like this uh, cool extra hybrid version of the character. Mm. And being 36 hours in, I'm starting to work on stuff like that. I gotten most of them into their master cl uh, class, which is, it's really weird. And I know this is kind of boring for people listening in, but the fact, uh, like my goal is to get Petra, a person who's really just a sword user to become uh, what is called a Falcon Knight, which means she'll be able to not only be able to fly, she'll be able to use the lance as well. And the storyline plot is, I don't really want to talk about it, but people have warned me that at the 30 hour mark or for me in my route chapter 11, shit gets fucking crazy. Like, like what the fuck is going on crazy like i can't believe nintendo is doing this kind of stuff because when you spend 30 hours just sitting there you know pretending you're a teacher and doing you know combat once a week and all that stuff you get into the doldrum and all of a sudden they just shake it up and like it's like having a, a bunch of gumballs that is your memories in a jar and you know you think every once in a while they'll shake it up just you know get something new they threw the damn jar to the ground and said fuck it you, you're m&ms now you're doing all sorts of different shit it's like for those that have gotten as far as i did the understanding analogy i'm really enjoying it it's providing a lot of opportunity i warned nick that maybe at the 30 hour mark i would get burnt out but they did all sorts of wild stuff at the last second i was gonna start to you know feel burnt out and i'm all in fresh right now and hmm. it's a game that's gonna be 80 hours long don't you have uh, if, uh, uh the opportunity to play as each of the houses yes uh there's a point where very early like first two hours of the game you can pick one of the three houses that represents the school and i like i said i chose one if i really wanted to i could start over and choose the other two houses and they have their own campaigns essentially okay. they're not identical in any so it's not like with means, octopath so. where um you get to play out the campaign for each of the eight characters through the one save uh, so technically if you wanted to play the other houses you'd have to start a new new game right uh like okay. uh to not go into like spoiler details like at a certain point things starting to getting a little bit more divisive and what i might do in this campaign will affect the plot in a way that it would not be if reasonable at all to do it by meshing them in one playthrough like uh it's like a visual novel where you pick uh, one waifu to focus on and it's right. like yeah. you can't really go for all three at the same time because that leads to some complications waifus say other waifus that you like uh, they, right, go, right. they go yandere and then you're dead so anyways yes fire emblem doing great loving it if anybody you know wants to talk about fire emblem at me at two times tyler i will talk fire emblem all day and half the morning with you holy shit what a great game anyways um, i had heard that it was trash so who I mean, the fuck are you just from I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i came at you immediately wow, and you were just like what yeah, yeah, i wanted same. to see if you would like retaliate you definitely did 
Way to stand up for yeah. that. <laughs> Protect it. <laughs> Keep it secret. Uh, Keep it safe. <laughs> I, I going to say, uh, you're going to need a long ladder to get up on my level, son. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I, <geez. laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Nick of the Tag and Glenn's gone after two episodes. Boosh. No, no, no. I, I totally love uh, having wild, contradictory opinions. Another game that I wanted to talk about, because uh, it came out this uh, or last week, was uh, Metal Wolf Chaos XD, I believe it's called. Yeah, Metal Wolf Chaos XD. So, the original game, Metal Wolf Chaos, uh, came out in like 2006 or 2008 or something. I don't even know what console it came out on. PS three maybe uh, we get, can we get a little fact checking on that one but uh revolver digital sorry devolver digital uh decided to take it revamp it up a little bit and re-release it as a hd version of this game i've never heard about this game except for you know when they did the performance for e3 um metal wolf came chaos came out originally in 2004 in japan for the xbox exclusively like the xbox og yeah, because yeah, 360 came out in like 2005. So this is an Xbox game that got revamped. Uh, so I've only gotten like maybe about an hour into it. And I, I I had to put it down because I was like, I'm going to go balls deep into this game. It's going to be fun. I'm going to have a good time. And then I started it. <laughs> that was the first mistake starting this game. Actually, the first mistake was probably buying this game because I realized that I think this was an April Fool's joke that just kind of got released in August instead because uh, it, <laughs> the... Have you guys ever uh, saw any uh, video footage for this game? No, no. Uh, it's this current like one, the, not the original, right? Uh, I mean, this is uh, essentially an HD port of this game. Like, oh. There's, there's no sequel or anything like that. Like, the storyline of this is uh, there's a big coup d'etat, I think that's how you say that, by the vice president, and they're taking over the United <laughs> States. It's 2015 or something like that. Are you shaking your head there, Nick? Or? No, no, I'm okay. Okay, no, no, uh, you're, you're right. And everything's falling apart, and there's only one person that's able to save the day, and that is the fictional president himself, uh, who decides that he's going to save the day by getting into a Gundam-style mech suit and then proceeding to raffle stomping anything he sees in his this way with uh what looks like about three trillion dollars worth of weaponry at a side which includes you know like an m14 or something like that why i have no idea and uh so the goal is you run around and it's just a shoot and run essentially with a giant robot shooting like little minion guys who really don't do that much damage to you in the first place and I, I tried getting into it, you know, I was like, ah, graphics be damned, let's have fun with this. And then I started hearing the voice acting. And I don't know if they kept the voice acting from 2004 or what, but it was, it was so cringy. Like, just hearing this, like, it, it sounded like the voice acting you expect from Ape Escape for the PlayStation kind of shit. And it's just, you know, Mr. President, I think you need to kill those bad guys while I open this door for you. And it's like, <laughs> then Mr. President's like, all right, gonna, you know, blow them up boys and then you know I, I i spend five minutes killing these minions that aren't doing any damage to me it's like mr president i finally got the door open for you go ahead and keep moving to the next objective and it's like just hearing that over and over again it just felt like it belonged in a sonic game like mm -hmm. uh, for the, the 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 dreamcast or something like that it's just like it was rough voice acting and it was a real huge turnoff mm -hmm. but it does have uh, I mean, oh, okay. Nick himself, as well as Nick in the chat, did say that this was a Japanese game that came out for the Xbox, correct? Yes. So this uh, definitely needed to get localized into English. So this was probably modern day English. And they found some people that were living under cardboard boxes off the street. And they decided, hey, you're going to be voice actors for the <laughs> game. And that's what we got here. Like, this is comically bad i'm assuming that's what they're going for is you know going for that 2004 playstation 1 vibe but holy shit well looking at also looking at some of the um the graphics of the like actual gameplay um two things yeah. that stick out to me um uh one the fact that it's locked to 30 fps um really really bothers oh. me like i'm not talking about 30 fps being bad like let's not even talk about that the fact that it's locked to a maximum 30 fps on oh, on a, on on like AMD like Ryzen Threadripper builds is a disservice to the PCs and also makes no sense for a remaster so I don't know what was going on here and it also doesn't really look that remastered it still looks like it's from out of like 2008 2009 graphics wise it looks like alternative scenes to metal gear solid 3 for the playstation 2 it's like it you know it looks okay but it's <laughs> like it's like they were getting ready to update it and all of a sudden like this 
giant gate that was, you know, has the title 2007 on it, and it just smacked right into it. Like, oh, I guess that's as far as we can upgrade it, and we'll just leave it in. I will say, though, you are in the minority, Tyler, because on Steam, it has very positive reviews right now. Yeah, I bet. You know what those people are called? Some people might call them fans. I call them trolls. No, this game is uh, atrocious. It is funny you know, as a joke, but it's not worth uh, you know a fifteen twenty dollar joke. Metal Bear, Gear Wolf Chaos, Chaos XD. XD. Yeah. So that was my game for the week. Uh, I might give another shot just so I can maybe have a different opinion on it because things might get more interesting i don't know i like Mel gear solid 3 it was pretty cool uh they also had a president in a mech suit in that game technically which is ironic that i did the comparison in the first place like maybe if kojima himself turns out to be the <laughs> vice president and as the vice president like rips off his mess and he's like finally a chance for me to demonstrate the true power of death stranding or something like that and uh it's this game uh jeez so so let's uh let's keep on moving on to the uh modular segment so we've gotten a lot of uh talk uh, coming out with new pokemon being revealed for pokemon sun uh, sorry sun ooh, ooh. sorry I'm, I'm living in 2016 in uh pokemon sword and shield now uh, i was just curious uh with the uh pokemon that have been you know announced especially very recently if there's any pokemon that you've been really fond of seeing um, I, I, I have, and I have a few things to say about it, but I, I want to hear from you guys first, from all the Pokemon that they revealed so far. What, uh... Well, I'm gonna say, from Glenn's point of view, for somebody who doesn't own a Switch, and... That's true. What that's I can fair. tell, doesn't have any interest yeah. in Pokemon whatsoever. Uh, from a faraway view of the chaos that is Pokemon, Glenn, what is your report? We got Glenn on the scene. I Glenn, still play Pokemon... I, uh, I mean... You played Pokemon Go. Congratulations. Let me tell you wow. what. You've managed to offend Glenn, Tyler. How I have a that? Game Boy Color with my original Pokemon Yellow in the cabinet. I'm OG. Anyway, um, honestly, uh, I haven't heard anything because I don't follow any social media outlets that uh, cover it. Uh, and they don't announce it for Pokemon Go stuff since they are not released in that game yet by any means. So from Glenn, my perspective, I do see some friends saying they're very excited to play it and i'm like good for you do you mean us or other people because... oh i have well i mean you and other people okay uh first thing i want to say is uh if i take trash to the end of the street am i allowed to brag about the fact that i played fortnite because you talking about saying how you're into pokemon because you play pokemon go that i mean yeah you're doing two similar things but it's not really the same concept walking trash to the end of the street is the same as playing fortnite yeah because it's a fucking burning pile of garbage just because there's some <laughs> correlation. No, I mean, that's like saying, no, that's that's pears and apricots. Anyways, uh, so a Pokemon that have uh, come out this uh, this uh, time around, uh, I think the, the big ones that I saw specifically was uh, Obstagoon and Morpeko? Morpeko? How do you want to pronounce that one? Uh, let me just find it. Uh, more, I, I, I'd say Morpeko. Really? Okay. Uh, now, uh, Brandon over in the team, uh, you know, our, our boy in the background, his, he picked the name Zigzagoon because he likes the Pokemon Zigzagoon, but he also likes uh, the League of Legends character Ziggs, and that's why he got his weird, uh, you know, uh, oh man, Glenn's making a face. Like Ziggs? Yeah, Ziggs the League of Legends character? Yeah. Oh, are you getting rid of the talk trash about his choice of League of Legends characters? No. Not at all. Wow, soft-spoken Glenn over here is uh, doing his... Uh, <laughs> Uh, rich white girl, uh, pose over here, like, hmm, wow. So, uh, he likes country. Oh, jeez. Country! Okay, anyways. From, uh, <laughs> listen, man, I'm from Kansas, and I do not like country music, so you want to talk about not liking country, let's talk about it. I was gonna say, you seem like the bluegrass kind of guy. No. No? Okay. Well, pardon me, kind sir. Give me so, musical theater any day. So, that Pokemon in uh, particular, uh, Zigzagoon, is, you know, one of his favorites. So, when he dis uh, discovered that, you know, Zigzagoon is going to be in the Pokemon game and getting a different type of, uh, you know, uh, evolution, I guess, what? Uh, yeah, uh, it's going to evolve into, it looks like it's going to evolve into Lunoon, like it normally does, and then it's going to evolve into a Pokemon called Obstagoon. Yeah, it's really, yeah. It's really interesting because... Um, they announced region variants. They've, I believe, they first announced variants in Gen Four with the difference in the uh, Shellgons and the Gastrodons, and then they've now announced region variants with the last generation. With you had Alolan Pikachu, uh, Alolan Raichu, Alolan Vulpix, Nine Tails, and so on. Um, and now they have Galar variants, but they're also introducing new evolution 
a new evolution to this Galar line uh, for the Zigzagoon uh, Linoon um, evolution. Uh, so they're introducing a new evolution in the family, which I think is interesting because it opens the door up now for um, so many other variants and new evolution lines because the last time we had a new generation evolution from an old generation was in generation four again with um uh the first thing coming to mind you've got glyce uh glygar and glyscore um electivire magmortar um mm. you had uh Gallade, you had uh, there, there's just a whole but you had roserade uh, there's a whole bunch. Scizor? Uh, Scizor. No, Scizor was Generation 2. Um, and it was... I know. Oh, oh no. Yes, like... that was the start of it. Yeah, no. You'd be correct then. Yeah. No, that was the kind of start of it. Scizor, Steelix. Um... Yeah, I mean, at the same time, they also introduced, like, the baby Pokemon, for example. Baby Pokemon, yeah. So, I I think this is a, like... And the new the EVs. The, the new EVs. Uh, so, the variants were fun, I think, with last Ugh. generation. And this is, I think, a nice way of taking that to the next level with um, mm. introducing a regional variant and also a new evolution line. And it makes sense because how many of you are familiar with uh, just in general British, like how familiar you guys with British culture? Uh, I mean, I kind of broke off of it in 1776. So, I mean, you okay, tell me. Okay, so I'm not, <laughs> not too familiar with uh, I mean, and 1970s comedy is where <laughs> my knowledge lies. So Monty Python, but that's about it. Uh, yeah, uh, Doctor Who, right? A lot of a lot of the inspiration here is from um, soccer fans, uh, because like British soccer fans have a reputation for being a little bit rash, abrasive, a little like a little yes. bit on the hooligan side, and so Liverpool. You can, yeah, and you can kind of see that with um, with some of these uh, uh, Pokemon and some of the character designs as well. There is very much a gym uh, soccer aesthetic going on with a lot of the gym challenges and stuff, and then you've got Team Yell. The protagonist team, uh, sorry, the antagonist team for this uh, game that is basically... You don't know this, Nick. Maybe they are the good guys. Maybe they are. I I don't know, but... Just like Team Rocket. Just like Team Rocket. Well, Team Rocket isn't inherently the good guys. Somehow. I know. I'm just, I know. Um, but it's interesting because Team Yell is essentially a fan club for a specific trainer who's doing the Pokemon Gym Challenge. And they'll do anything to make sure that she gets to win. And by anything, they mean blocking people from actually challenging the gym to themselves, right? So just it seems like a good old fashioned like oh like OG kind of like uh, Pokemon antagonist team, like uh, like enemy team. They're just kind of there, just stirring up shit. They don't have these grand, uh, you know, grandiose plans of like world domination. It's just kind of like it's like we like that guy. You can't challenge that yeah. guy. <laughs> so would uh, you argue then like the the team yell of OG days would be Gary's like parade of uh, questionably older women in the back of his convertible during the uh, yeah. anime times. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Except here they're like, it's- they'll let you know about it. These are not just groupies looking for a quick lay. These are like, we're going to make sure that she's at the top of the world. Kind of like, and then they only listen to her when she's around. So when they, when she's not around, um, they just do whatever they want and just cause chaos. So I'm huh. like, I'm really excited for this. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, re- I don't often get behind another gang in Pokemon besides the Squirtle Squad. Squirtle Squad, oh, yeah. just running around causing shit. Yeah, Squirtle, squirt, squirt. <laughs> squirt, <laughs> a squirt. Uh, so does the person that this, uh, Team Yell is, uh, behind, is she okay with them doing what they do? Um, from what we see, we don't... Or is she like, please stop following me kind of stuff? I think she's kind of like, uh, don't do that. She, she, she didn't start them. She's not like, tr- I think they're just following her around and she's kind of like, leave me alone. Don't do that. But then when she's not there, they'll just still cause shit anyways. Uh, I mean, and she'll say, you know, don't do that. And we're like, yes, my queen will never do such a thing. And she turns <laughs> it back. Let's kill that guy that challenged her. <laughs> pretty much. There was pretty, body in the Calarian Ocean. That's, that's, uh, that's the way they described it, and it's really interesting. Um, and they've introduced one new Pokemon that I think is very interesting. Um, and what's that? Uh, oh, so uh, you already mentioned it. More Peko. More Peko, yeah. The uh, category, they termed it the two-sided Pokemon. Yes. Which is Oh, that's the one that turns inside out. Uh, uh, I mean, if it turned inside out, we'd have to raise the rating of the game. Sorry, I saw, a, I saw a little, like, plush uh like stuffed animal that oh no that's you uh, uh, i think out. you're talking about uh puku muku from last generation oh, okay. it's a little like uh, yeah i'm impressed that you tried saying it because i know i wouldn't have um so morpeko um i think we can all relate to this um it ha- it's called a two-sided pokemon because it changes forms when it's hungry so it has little pouches yeah, uh, where spirit, it's sto- spirit pokemon where it's where it stores food 
uh, to keep so that it, to prevent it from changing its forms because it goes into like a destructive rage and when it gets angry it changes color changes forms and it just goes all out and it goes from electric to dark it changes type i think um uh no it is an electric oh. dark type at the same time but i think what's going to happen here yeah. like some of the other ones is swaps is, type. Um, the stats will change depending on yeah. what mode it's in um so it'd be really oh. interesting to see how to like because lore wise it only does this when it's hungry so how does this happen in a battle because we don't have a hunger stat <sighs> Does it does it do this when it's not holding a food item, or does is there a way to actually trigger this? That's a very good question. Uh, my big question is how the they managed to put my wife into the game. <laughs> how did they put me into the game? <laughs> All of us in the game. <laughs> wow. And uh, like looking and at a corgi. It, I'm gonna show the, uh, the you know the the link to the picture. This Pokemon is reaching into a pocket that is part of its skin, kind of like a so, you know hip kangaroo pouch yeah like a kangaroo and pouch it's got, but the, it's got two of them and it you know this connects to uh the the center of its body which runs vertically up over its head and everything it's like it like if you were to do like uh the detective pikachu treatment on this thing this thing would look horrifying i think so just you know like, it, it's scary to think about how it can reach under its skin to grab food like this well it'd probably be like a kangaroo pouch Right, as you mentioned already, so they just had fashion. Yeah, but does the kangaroo pouch that's attached to its own head and runs up and above its own body? Yeah, it'd be like wearing this weird skin cape over the entire yeah. front of your body. It's like, oh my god, no me gusta. Oh, jeez. What um, tell her what what Pokemon design have you liked so far? I mean, we talked about it. I absolutely do love the Obstagoon, like in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh. I am uh, kind of a uh, fan over the whole Dreadnought thing. I realize that he's going to be kind of like a strong start, but it's probably not going to keep up to the competitive meta in the later games. I could be wrong. You know, kind of like uh, the Drampa situation. Right, right. Where, you know, uh, he he's good, strong in the very beginning, but if you're going to use him for competitive play, well, you know, a water rock is going to be kind of slow. Right. Also, uh, Corva Knight uh, looks great in the artwork. Right. It look doesn't look as nice when you look at the in-game model. It doesn't look nearly as cool, but, you know, opinions, I guess. But Corviknight, right. you know, the uh, flying steel, dark-looking raven Pokemon. <laughs> I don't know why. I got a thing for ravens, you know? Teen I think Tides. I think I was right on the money with um, <laughs> my uh, guess that there's going to be a lot of steel types. And, um, yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll get a steel or a dragon type Eevee. Maybe. <gasps> oh, that'd be dope. Uh, well, if there was a steel type evolution, what do you think it would call or be called? Steelion, dude. Yeah. Steelion? I mean, yeah. I, I, huh. Orion. <laughs> Real creative. Chromion. Chrom mm. That I like that actually. Or Sylveon might be kind of good. We already have a Sylveon. I think like oh, there's uh, Sylveon. Metalion? Yeah, the fairy type. I didn't know about that. Yeah, oh, that's, that's what that type. one's called. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh wow. There's a trick Can't in Pokemon, Pokemon Go, Go where huh? you. You can name the Eevee yeah. a certain thing and then evolve it, and it will turn into the same one. So I never learned the name of that one because I never played it. It's game not. It's with not it in the in game it. yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not. It's not in Pokemon Go yet because it's a Generation Six. It's oh, only I'm Pokemon Go's only up to Generation that. Four. So oh, you I think, now have I'm thinking Leafeon of the and Glaceon. Type. So uh, yeah. yeah, with Generation Four, Leafeon and Glaceon should be in the game soon. Yeah, I think Umbreon's my favorite mm -hmm. evolution. Anyway, uh, let's see. Moving and on. Uh, a Dragon type Eevee. Oh, a Dragon type Eevee. A Scalion. Yeah, yeah. I, I could work with that. Yeah. Wow, really quick on the uptake there, Nick. Uh, hmm. Dreon. Mm. I like Dreon too. Uh, Dragion. Dragion. Dragion or Draconion or something like that. I'm kind of stuck on uh, Metalion for the uh, Steel type. Metali I'm trying to think of. That would be cool. Be Metallicon, did you say? Metalion. 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 Like metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I no because you said that and I heard Metallicon and I'm like Metallica. <sighs> Fuck yeah. Or I mean, Feronion. I mean, <laughs> just because it's steel type doesn't mean it actually has to look like steel because it could be a, like a different type of metal. So That's true. Adamantine yeah. neon or Mithrilion or something like that. Mithrilion would be dope. Are, are, you, on? are you starting what? to get on the Eevee train here? No, bit, he doesn't give a fuck about Eevee, but then he likes steel type. So unfortunately, he's going to have to consider a steel Eevee if there is one for his team. I mean, if I can't have a Scizor, which they didn't officially announce yet in this thing, I'm going to have to find a replacement. And yeah. if uh, Mithrilion, you know, our evolution <laughs> steel type that doesn't exist yet gets announced, then I mean, who the fuck am I to you know, go along with it? Yeah. And, and uh, I do agree. Like uh, steel yeah. types are going to be with uh, as Nick bought up in the chat. Steel type seems be the thing because it makes sense you know um you think about uh you think about mythical like england and stuff you've got 
swords, knights, dragons, castles, and they've already showed some of that imagery. You have a armored raven. Um, you have a steel dragon that they've already announced, and then they're taking some modern British pop culture and introducing like the the soccer hooligans and stuff. So yeah, no, I'm excited to see what'll come of this game, regardless of the whole Dexit controversy. Controversy, dude. Controversy. Controversy. Um, yeah, I'm I'm still gonna play the fuck. You're always game. blaming it on gender. It's not controversy. It's controversy. <laughs> controverse them <laughs> okay fine <laughs> we're all in this together <laughs> hashtag uh man so i think that's gonna be it for the uh the pokemon section we obviously are a little bit excited for something like that this next upcoming topic for the show baby uh discord has been making a little nonsense here and there and we're on discord right now some things are going on oh man Discord is offering a uh, live game streaming feature right now. I inadvertently read up about this, um, so I have plenty to say about this, but I'll give you all the chance to say something because I'm. this is very exciting news. Nick, you are more enthusiastic about me, even though I am pretty excited. Let's hear it. Hot takes. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a competitor to anything. I think it's just going to be a fun way to share gameplay with friends. That's it. It's just super interesting. Right. I. This is the casual equivalent of streaming. You know, it's yeah. not like, you know, you're trying to go big or whatnot, share it to the world. It's like, eh, you know, uh, I want to share a gameplay of Fire Emblem to my friends, so I'll do it this way now. Yeah, pretty much. And That's all it, it is. It, it, it's so weird. I know, you know, I, I'm making it sound like, oh, man, Discord. You know, it's like Super Smash Bros. Discord is entering the battlefield. Dun, da, da, da. Da, 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 da. And it's like no they're not actually doing that they're not they they're an assist trophy they're like waluigi they're not quite onto the battlefield yet rest in peace waluigi uh but yeah they are jumping into the thing to where Wait, they're who's letting waluigi you... maybe nick was right <laughs> maybe it is only gonna be two upsets uh... <laughs> <laughs> i'm just messing with you guys i wow. love messing with you you're so defensive of your love of like nintendo it's I'm, funny to me. Th- that's absolutely fair. I mean, I'm sure a uh, lot of people have come at you before, so it's probably comes. Yeah, from when will Zelda finally save the princess? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> now listen here, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> the first thing is, Glenn. I am very gullible, and since I don't know you a hundred percent as well as I will, you know, in the near You'll future, you'll start to notice it. I give all uh, these signs, man. It's, you, I'm like I, I, I believe everything you say. So when you ask, you know, who is Waluigi? It's like it's one uh, of my favorite games. Like in real life, with most people, they'll say this, and I'll be like, "What's that?" I was gonna say your favorite no, game I... with Waluigi, and I was like, "What's your favorite game?" Then like tennis or what? Like, <laughs> he doesn't right? have a game, so yeah, I know. One day, Waluigi's Mansion got to make it happen. <gasps> Can't even get him in wow. Smash Brothers, man. I know, okay? You got fucking... You know, all those party games, no Waluigi. Waluigi's in them. Is he in all of them? Other than uh, Smash? Like he's Mario in Party? Mario and Party, and Mario Super Tennis, S- and all that stuff. Uh, Mario Strikers. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't know why people cry then. Yeah, that's great. It, it's weird because they, you know, it was Waluigi and Daisy just don't get enough attention, but they put Daisy as an Echo skin of Peach, so why didn't they just have Waluigi for some reason in, uh, you know, as Luigi or some weird shit like that? Just let him... Mm-hmm. You know, just be a weirder version of Luigi. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. So, anyways, like uh, like I was saying, uh, Discord. So, guys, uh, we can now stream to friends in Discord and whatnot. Do you think you'd be able to implement the, or any plans to use something like this? Um, I don't know. I, but I do know that even if it does turn out to be more than just sharing games, and they become, yeah. like, they encroach on other people's territory, like Mixer or Twitch or something like that. Um, competition is healthy. So, you know, whatever they're going to bring, whether it's novel or it's competitive uh, with the existing platforms, I'm down for it. Because I've always liked Discord. I mean, it's a little confusing to learn how to use, but it's a great way to stay connected with communities that you enjoy. Um, and if they can bring more, if they can do other things as well as they've connected me with you know friends and stuff like that and help me make new ones then heck yeah i'm all for it it's been definitely a janky at times and i'm not even sure if it's its fault or you know you know whoever you know want to put a blame on the bad moments i've had with discord being really really weird with me i wonder if this is just like a testing ground to see if uh they have a moment of opportunity to maybe become competitive in something like this like uh it, it is 
they you know they made it very clear hey you can only do this to like 10 people so you know they don't want to like uh, host servers that's just gonna break the fucking you know their whole shebang there with what they have set up right now but i mean if they find and get enough more you know entertainment out of it what's stopping from saying hey maybe we should make this a, a larger thing a larger part of discord because i mean if they can smell money discord really hasn't been like aggressive in terms of getting your money once you count nitro every now and then which you know they they try real hard it's like hey if you want moving gif images for your profile thing give us a lot of money a month and it's like uh, no thank you uh, i'm good on that but if they want to you know try the nickel and dime you know with subscribers and whatnot i can see that as a possible thing and as long as i can stream to all of them right now i'm happy so if discord wants to join the fray they're more than welcome to uh speaking of joining the fray they're joining a different way as well uh samsung is actually trying to put discord into its phones like as shovelware if you will to uh let you chat with friends while mobile gaming so you know much like we kind of like shot to the heavens that is nintendo saying why do you have your own online service this is terrible don't make us pay for our own voice uh, chat app and all that stuff samsung is starting to you know they made their own jump saying hey we'll we'll use discord as our you know prime go-to way of talking with using our phones while playing games Thoughts? i mean it makes i mean it makes sense um so i mean you mentioned uh discord and money and if i mean if you think about it outside of nitro and even though discord has its own store uh technically for like games and stuff discord is primarily a free service so right. the fact that you know i can understand some of it being janky some server issues there's issue bugs here and there but for what they've done for i think video games in general over the last few years I think they're very well aware of their place as a free service that people use, um, which is and why, trust. yeah, I don't think that they will ever move into the competitive streaming side for uh, to just refer back to that. And it also makes sense for them to partner with companies in order to get some money coming in from somewhere where they can, you know, it's it's now a native app on, on Samsung phones, which makes sense because so many people use it i have friends who don't play video games who use discord uh because right. it just evolved into something that's just uh that's just growing to something that anybody can use you can make communities around fucking book clubs all you want you want to talk about uh i don't know uh the sisterhood of traveling pants on discord online like a thousand year old book you want to talk about it sure here you go here's an online community to discuss that book you know as glenn is reaching for i can only presume is the book no okay i wasn't sure what he was reaching for i'm like oh boy he's about to say yeah just an right itchy now. ankle ah okay my bad uh now this is a bit bold of me to say this but it honestly feels like discord is currently in a place that google was back in like 2005 to where they weren't big but they were there and people loved using it because it was free and accessible mm -hmm. and obviously google turned into something completely different with its rapid expansions and whatnot but i feel like discord is currently in the good graces with the people right now because people enjoy it the uh, discord hasn't really done anything wild that you know sell information out on them that we're aware of and whatnot and so far you know they've been it feels like they've given a lot to us pretty much for free you know it almost feels like we're in depth to women's you know shape or form like right now we're using discord for free to you know record our calls and you know send it out through the streams and whatnot so honestly i feel like if they tried making small moves such as partnerships and whatnot that nick is suggesting i feel like people would be more inclined to go towards that it's, it's kind of like the uh free the play game style uh, mindset it's like apex legend is completely free to use and play you can play as much as you want but if you want to buy this little shit on the side you know we're, we're listening kind of stuff and so i feel like discord could, could totally go for that free to play style with uh, hitting things up and they could make a shit ton of money if they play their cards right the only thing that they'd have to be wary of is if you look at i was just reading an article about instagram instagram was bought out by facebook uh, a couple of years ago and instagram has slowly lost is slowly losing all of its independence because now they're taking there's a direct message feature on Instagram and now the Facebook Facebook is forcing them to integrate that into Facebook's native messaging uh, service so they're trying to integrate the Instagram and Facebook direct messaging platforms into one so that's oh, what geez. so that's what they'd have to be wary about as a, because Discord was made for a specific purpose you mentioned Google and Google what we know Google for is like the search engine stuff that they that they do primarily and how they made money off that and how they've expanded into all these other things and they've become this big tech company but discord started for a very specific reason it started for a very specific purpose and as long as they keep their focus on preserving that and add in all these other things great but as long as you can still in 10 years not let's say not, let's not say 10 years three years from now you can still sign on to discord and hop in a voice channel with your friends i think mm -hmm. whatever happens is is 
fine. Right. Good agree. deal. Any final thoughts on uh, the matter then? Or I think it'll be just, really cool know, just... because if I wanted to just play something really quick, I was talking to a friend about this. If he just wanted to show me this thing that he'd done or this gun that he found on Destiny instead of like struggling to take a screenshot or just like, here, I'm just going to stream so you can see this. You just be like, all right, just get in this voice channel. I'll just turn this on. Here you go. Just look at it. All right. Thanks. Bye. You know, it's so uh, I think uh, I'm excited for it when it does roll out. I believe it starts rolling out. Uh, there's a soft launch starting the 15th. And then, uh, like, a oh, month this at, month, yeah, this month uh, to select yeah. people, and then nice. next next month is when it goes uh, live for everybody. And so, how it works is you and uh, nine other people, so ten people in total, will get into a voice channel, and one of you can choose to turn on like how they have the screen sharing option right now. You just do that for a game, so there's no fancy overlays, no camera, it's just the game and your voice. <laughs> awesome, that's awesome. Mm. I'm excited to you know give this a shot honestly because you know you could say that this is also could be used for things like uh maybe you want to watch a movie or anime with uh one of your friends and you don't want to throw it over the internet to where people can report and get it taken down so you host let's say an anime that you totally owned and paid for but you know, you're streaming it and watching it with your friends for all or just a movie or something uh, like legal purposes yes i gonna say uh you know everything's legal and counted for in the scenario you know i would not suggest doing anything illegal no sir could watch hentai together for some reason but uh, you know, hey. That's kind of romantic. Get into a private so Discord fun. server, you and your girlfriend or boyfriend or many boyfriends and girlfriends or them and they and then sit and chill and watch an anti. Sounds like a good Friday night. Len, statute of limitations for admitting a crime is seven years, correct? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let me do some math. So during my freshman year in, uh, of college, uh, there was a uh, interesting tradition that me and all my roommates chose to do as, you know, this thing where they had to cook them in their head. They thought it'd be a great idea. Uh, you know, being 18, 19 years old, uh, they convinced our oldest roommate, who was 23, to get us a shitload of vodka and watch a hentai called La Blue Girl. Uh, which is about a ninja girl who has to fight off demons and whatnot through uh, using sex style moves. Like, for example, uh, this uh, evil bad grunt guy defeats uh, somebody by turning her pubic hair into blue needles and shoots it at his face. That kind of stuff. And so what the, uh, the idea, the Sounds idea of continuing cool. this, this sweet college tradition of drinking vodka and watching La Blue Girl with my closest friends... I just feel like that would be a bonding experience that Discord is offering to me. So, yeah, I'm down for Discord doing this. <laughs> and before That's Casual Bash Request server gets deleted from Discord. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh. <laughs> I think that's going to be it for the show. Let's wrap okay, this cool. up, guys. Uh, Nick, well, games are coming out this week. Hit me with all 20 of them. Um, we've only got the one game on our list uh, for this coming week. It's called Rebel Galaxy Fuck. Outlaw. Coming out on the 13th of August on PC. Now, Rebel Galaxy is a uh, is a space exploration game where there's trading and exploration. It's single player. And so Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is focused... It's a story-driven um, game focused on the one character. Uh, and it's basically you're in a cockpit, so you're just the one pilot. And you're going out and doing very much similar things that the... Uh, the main game does. Uh, Rebel Galaxy came out in 2015. This one's coming out this year. Do we know Sweet. what the uh, price range is for something like that? Um, I think it was 30 US. Well, not too bad. Sounds it's coming it. out on um, the Epic Store. It's an ex epi oh, uh, Rebel no. Galaxy Outlaw is an Epic Store exclusive. Great. And there's, oh, I believe, uh, roughly a year before it comes out on Steam. So time exclusive. Yes. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, over in this day in gaming, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to take over this one for now. Uh, we have four games that we're going to celebrate the birthdays of, so happy birthday to these games that came out on August 12th, which is the day that this podcast will be released to the wild, coming out in for That's the PC. That's my little brother's birthday. Sorry. Oh, well, happy birthday, little brother. Uh, the one, actually, I'm not going to go into uh, vapid detail on how you termed him last time you talked the story about him. Uh, coming out for the PC in 2016, making this the second, sorry, third birthday. Happy third birthday to No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky's third birthday is going to be uh, this Monday. Everybody's all collecting that, you know. Uh, coming out in 2014, which is actually really confusing because it came out for the PlayStation 3 and Vita. Mind you, the PlayStation 4 came out in 2012. The, so the, why this... What, what was that second thing you mentioned? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't think... Uh, the PS3 and what? Uh, the PS3 and the Wii U? 
No, just oh, okay. Uh, I'm okay. gonna confuse okay. people. I'm gonna confuse people. PlayStation Three and the PlayStation uh, Vita. Never heard of it. Vita. Never heard of it. Oh, I mean, if you see it, it's sitting on the wall right now. So take a good gander at that damn thing. Yeah, is it invisible? Is it a blank? Case? Don't know what you're talking about. It's just a a, a black painted brick that's you know plastered against. Oh, the wall okay, right that's right a brick. There. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's strange it to have right a brick in a frame like, uh, on your wall. <laughs> I mean, break glass with brick if you want. Oh shit, the brick is inside the glass. I screwed <laughs> up. This is this is an engineering failure of many proportions. It's like, what do I do? Do I just throw the the frame itself against the ground so I can get the brick to break the glass even further? Anyways, coming out for the PlayStation Three and Vita in 2014, making this a fifth birthday. Happy birthday to Akiva's trip, Undead and Undressed, which you guys know to some extent. My little yeah. fun Japanese RPG <coughs> action adventure ripping off the yeah. Empire's clothing to, you know, kill him. Uh, happy seventh birthday when it came out for beta for the PC. This one's for Nick in the chat. War Thunder. It's War Thunder's seventh birthday. So happy birthday to the War Thunder. And the last one, uh, you know, this is where I snuff out the candle before the motherfucker can actually blow it out themselves because they do it every fucking year around this time. Uh, happy birthday to the Madden. <gasps> I'm not going to name Ultimate ev- Shock. Wow. The Madden game came da-da-da. out in a year of da-da-da. so and so. Wow. How many fucking years has it been birthday? since John Madden Dude, actually asshole. narrated that game? Like 97? <laughs> Sorry. So, it, like, they change it every now and then. So it's like 07, 09, 13, and whatnot. And, you know, maybe, uh, on you know Tuesday, it's gonna be like uh, sixteen twenty. Well, not twenty because it's coming out. I don't remember when that game. Oh, it came out last week, I think. Anyways, my point is they come out around the same time every fucking year, and so there's a bajillion of them whose birthday is today. Happy birthday, Madden the game, and not John Madden who prefers to keep out of the public eye so he doesn't get sued or otherwise get you know reviewed on. <sighs> I kind of miss actual Madden. I wonder what he's doing nowadays. I wonder. Agreed. A name that I'm not familiar with because I don't know John anything. Madden? You don't know John Madden? I don't know anything about hand egg. I'm sorry. Ooh, Do you know how much it killed me to call football soccer? Like, it just chipped away <laughs> at my soul a little bit. Why? Because, you gotta say it with that because, weird accent. Football. Because there's only two countries in the world, maybe like three countries in the world that call it soccer. The most watched yeah. the wa- the most watched and most popular sport in the world is called soccer by three countries in the world. And that's just the US, Canada, Canada and, and I'm just else? I'm just putting in space for one other because I'm sure there's one other country out there that yeah, does Yeah, yeah. Sure. No. So, yes. But it hurts you. Why does that hurt you? You grew up in Canada, yeah? No, I grew up in the Middle East. Oh, really? Yeah, I grew up in the Middle East. Oh, did we not do a background? I should refer you to our um, AMA interview episode. uh, Yeah, the casual interview of Nick. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I grew up in the Middle East. Oh! Yeah, yeah. That was one of the things I was going to pitch to you soon, Tyler. We have to do that. Oh, yeah. we get to do the casual interview of Glenn. Oh my yeah. God, <laughs> this is gonna oh, be so no. much fun. You're oh man, so much. But yeah, I grew up in the Middle East, <laughs> so like, you know, it's it's football to me. <laughs> You're gonna do not, the black bar of the eyes and change your yeah. voice, like. Hi, I'm not Glenn Houston. I'm actually uh, Sean Connery for some reason. I'm gonna answer Sean Connery. <laughs> that are uh, sent our way. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thanks. But, uh, um, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, because I played I played that sport. No, you can call uh, it soccer. All the way into college. I've gotten used to it. I know. I'm just dead. I, here's the thing: is I I grew up in a college town, even though we were in Kansas. So like we had people from you know other places all the time, and they would just say American football. Yeah, no, I call it American football. football yeah, but it's, and so like it's just I a have mouthful, no problem so I'll just with that. Say football and soccer now because it's just you know, yeah, there's too many words in my mouth. But I well, played in college, egg. so yeah. And, Hand egg? Yeah. Hand egg. What yeah, because I used to play rugby egg. too. So this is hand egg. Oh, yeah. okay. Hand egg. Okay. Okay. So anyways, let's let's uh, wrap up the... Oh, man. Cultural differences around the one <laughs> sport. Wow. Oh, jeez. So uh, let's do some wrap-ups and plugins. You can find me on Twitter at 2 times Tyler. All letters, one word, 2 times Tyler. Nick, where can we find you and your fun work? Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Instagram at LR11. You can also find me on Twitter at LR the 11th because somebody stole LR11 and they're an inactive account and I can't get it for the moment. So yeah. Okay. And Glenn, where can we find you and your work? I'm on um, twitch.tv slash raiseth R-A-E-Z-E-T-H um, and also uh, uh, ready to roll, which is just has little underscores between the words and it's Ready, the number two, R-O-L-E. And then also on Twitter uh, for Ready to Roll, as well as my personal account is Glenn Houston, spelled like Huston, family name. Yes, Houston without the 
first toe. Without the so, O, yeah. Yeah, don't do what I do and accidentally call you Glenn Houston, as in the you know major city in Texas. Whoops. Okay. You can also find uh, Casual Master Quest on Twitter at MasterQuestPod. Or you can email us at casualmasterquest at gmail.com. We also have an Instagram. We also have a Facebook page to search for Casual Master Quest in that given area. And you will totally find it. However, the most important thing I would like to talk about is our Discord. It's not as often talked about. And I really think that you would enjoy it. And maybe you're just one of the shoot shit chat chat. And maybe you want to be part of the people that get to ask questions to us because you love hearing your name read on the podcast. That could totally be you. Or maybe you just like free shit because we are also going to be doing something a little special in a second here that we'll be talking about. But if you want to uh, give us, you know, a, a join us on the Discord, uh, link for the invite will be in multiple places. You can check it out on Twitter. You can check it out on uh, the show notes for, uh, you know, this podcast when it comes out. You can pretty much find it anywhere. You could ask any of us and we'll happily hook you up. I will say um, there is a, I was doing it right at the start and I showed you, showed it to you, Tyler. There is a link now in our Twitter profile that will, you click on it. It's it's where the website stuff goes and that'll take you to every single place we are at from our Twitter to our, uh, I actually have to link Facebook from our Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Mixer, Twitch, Discord, and our Podbean. Holy shit. Yeah. Nice. Well, look at you, you big baller, you. Uh, thanks for uh, making like the big jump there. What is that? Linktree. Yelp. No, it's the it's the the office. They have that joke about the program. That... Oh, um, woof. 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 There yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Woof. Woof. Okay, let's. Woof. If you want to talk about office, woof. we can talk about office anyway. because I have watched that show yeah. like twelve times, start to finish. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, if you want to get the big list to find out where everything is, uh, go ahead and check us out on Twitter at MasterQuestPod. P O D. I know it's kind of lame, but unfortunately, Casual Master Quest didn't fit. So, whoops. Also, I screwed up, and I got to switch it back to here. I uh, accidentally uh, got rid of the display, and it kind of threw things into a loop there. Should be fixed a little bit better now. My bad about that. Just, geez. Uh, anyways, I think that's going to be it, but there is one last thing I do want to point out. For those who are listening, we do want to do a giveaway. Uh, the process is going to take a month. So at the end of the month, the first podcast that happens, which is going to be, I believe, coming out on the 2nd of September. So a little bit under like three, three and a half weeks, aka a month. We're going to be doing a giveaway. Two places. First one is going to be on Twitter. Twitter is going to be easy to search us at MasterQuestPod. We're going to be offering a... What were we going to offer, Nick? Um, I believe a $25 Steam card gift card 20, 25 bucks to steam a gift car we're gonna send them a toyota yeah 25 dollars worth of whole 25 dollar worth of of car so probably a really like, nice matchbox car <laughs> i was gonna say we're gonna give you that cool uh thing that you put over the uh gas nozzle or yeah just like the, the gas cap something but it's from the car that's worth 25 dollars yes exactly you'll pass the emissions <laughs> test some turtle this. wax that you can put on you know cover over a part of your uh headlights to help shine yep, and make it yep. even more clear thing it's very important especially with when it come around all that stuff that collects it, it's nasty uh but yes a 25 dollar steam gift card and i believe we're either going to be doing a I believe it was a $10 one for the Discord people as they shout out to say thank you for being a part of the team. And, you know, just, you know, easy way. Just got to click a button. Check it out on Twitter. Uh, once we get it posted, it will, you know, rules are super simple. You don't have to do anything too crazy. Same thing on Discord. And we'll get that out to you guys when you're interested. You know, just this way of saying, hey, this is season four of Casual Master Quests. We're doing pretty fucking good right now. Also, thank you. Fuck you. Thank you. Uh, so I think that's going to be uh, it for episode number 61. That was Nick. That was Glenn. This is Tyler. And this was Casual Master Quest. So we'll see you next week. And don't forget that I'll never stop the grind, baby. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Oh, thank God, look- Tyler. We're finally done with these people. Ugh. Yeah, fuck the. Oh, oh, I probably should hit end stream. Shit. Oh, shit. Oh God! <laughs> Wait, uh, we, were we really not live? Are we live? No, we're we we're, were offline joking. now. We were yeah. joking. Yeah, 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 you were fucking around. <laughs>Intro to the podcast titled Casual Master Quest was paid for and produced by the wonderful talent Revelry's Music. You can find more of their work at soundcloud.com 
forward slash revelries music, or just click on the link in the show descriptions. The background music is the album Top 50 Best Classical Piano Music by Brilliant Classics. You can find out more about Creative Commons at www.creativecommons.org forward slash license forward slash buy forward slash 4.0. I, I, I am your horse. I'm your horse. Look at my <laughs> You're my horse. horse. Uh,